Hey guys. Man, I'm beat. Doing some cabinetry work and I'm still not done for the yard. So I decided to come out here and I'm gonna smoke me the smallest cigar I ever smoked. It's a day enough short corona from Nicaragua. I got a new batch of cigars. are dirty. Whew. <coughs> so kicking back here with Papa. need this because I was falling asleep <laughs> I'm so tired so let me tell you what's going on with the boat it's embarrassing and I'm so pissed I have been video because I am still struggling with the carburetor so I took the carburetor Uh, I've had the carburetor already rebuilt, sitting in the in the car for a whole week, waiting for this uh, heat wave to go by. Finally, yesterday, I said, okay, let's go. I went over there, hooked everything up, hooked up the regulator, pressure regulator, and cranked it, and it started flooding. And flooding, and flooding, and I said, well, Jesus Christ, I mean, this is, this cabaret is completely redone. The guy did a really nice paint job on it. I said, what, what the hell's going on? So I get my little hammer. And, uh, oh no, I called the guy that recommended me the, the, uh, the carburetor rebuild, rebuild guy. I didn't have his number, so I called the other guy. He says, well, did you have the carburetor on its side? Because those Rochesters are a little bit clunky and he didn't say clunky, I'm saying clunky, but he says it could have gotten stuck a little bit. You have to tap it. So I say, okay, that's a good idea. I grab my little hammer and I'm tapping, tapping, tapping. And I said, okay, start it, floods. Then I finally get the number because I looked down my list and, and there was the number from the guy I called me directly. I explained what's going on. And he said, tap it from the top. So what I did is I did a video. And I tapped it, tapped it from the top in the middle more or less. Cranked it again and it's still gushing up. It, it, it looks like it's a fountain of fuel. I said, well, I don't know what else to do. I mean, I keep tapping it and tapping it. Every time I, uh, I, I crank it, it floods. And I I crank down the, the pressure regulator to, to one. I had it at four. I took it down to one. Cranked it, and you can see the fuel. This time it's slower, but it's still flooding. And I said, no, there's got to be something wrong. Something's going on. So I said, you know, maybe because I had it in the car for a week. And then when I took it to the boat, I put it in a small bucket and it didn't fit flat. I had to put it sideways. And I said, maybe the float is really stuck in there. So I said, okay, 
take it out. I drained it a little bit. It did have fuel inside. And I slammed it on the deck flat. It just went boom, bang, bang, you know, three times. And I said, okay, whatever was stuck, it has to be unstuck. Put it back on the engine, connect the hoses, tighten it down, everything. Crank it, it floods. And I'm there for half an hour trying to get this thing to start. Nothing. I called back the guy and I said, listen, I've been tapping, I've been slamming, I've been doing everything, and it's still flooding. And I said, do you, can you check? And he goes, yeah, bring it in. So I went and I took it, took it off the engine and run back to the car, run, you know, in heavy, heavy traffic. Made it to his house. He opened it up right there in front of me. Everything looks clean. There's no debris, there's no sand. There's not even a hair, anything to get the float stuck. The needles are working. He says, you know what? It had a big float, a big square kind of float. And he said, let me put a, a lighter one. So he changed the float. You know, everything's working. It goes up and down. And then he put a pipe, I put a hose on the, on the intake there and he blew and it blows, you can hear, and then when he pushed down on the float, on the seat, it would shut down. It would, it, there's no, and he blew, he was blowing hard, like, like copying, imitating the fuel pump, pushing seven pounds, something like that. So there's nothing coming in, so it shouldn't be flooding. So now, I have it back in the car. I'm going back tomorrow. I think I'm going tomorrow, maybe Sunday, I don't know. I'm kind of disappointed with this whole thing. But I think also that I'm going to have to do is change the regulator that I have. Because what I'm thinking now that is not the carburetor's fault is the fuel pump. The fuel pump, I bought it from... West Marine, and the fuel pump is supposed to be from either a Bobo or a Mercury, because I bought two of them, one for each engine. Maybe that pump belongs on a 454 engine, which has a bigger carburetor. So I went to O'Reilly's, and they do have a fuel regulator that looks like it's better built than the one I put on. The one I put on is like 20 bucks. I don't think it's working. And I saw a video of a guy say, say, this is crap. And that's the crap I bought. I saw the video afterwards. <laughs> Anyways, I want to have to go and buy another regulator, which costs from 55 to $66. It's a little bit smaller. It's the same type. You put it on the hose and the fuel line. It has a dial and you can dial it from one pound to four or um, no to five pounds I think maybe six that's it and I'm gonna have to do that and try it if it still floods with that and I was even thinking of getting a uh, there's a little fuel gauge that's got liquid inside I think it's oil it's not oil is that What do you call that oil that they put on compasses? It's got that oil in there, and it's a and it's a pressure gauge for the fuel. I might even go as far as buying that and installing it to actually get a good reading. Because the reading I was getting five and a half pounds is from a Harbor Freight gauge. It's a big gauge like this, and it's used for different things. And one of them said in the dial it said fuel pressure. I hooked it up, I cranked it, it gave me five and a half pounds. Five and a half pounds is not enough to flood a carburetor. So if it's still flooding, and I got a better regulator, and it's giving me five and a half pounds, then the carburetor is completely shot. And the guy took it apart, looked in it. He says, it, it can't be a crack because if it's a microscopic crack, it wouldn't flood that quickly. 
and I took a video also. He saw the video. He goes, wow, it's flooding like within five seconds. So if anybody out there knows what's going on, please give me a, give me a, you know, give me a comment. <laughs> give me a tip. What the hell's going on with the carburetor? It's driving me crazy, man. I feel like I'm jinxed with the damn thing. And then I was also considering on buying, if the carburetor is bad, then I'm gonna have to buy another carburetor, but I don't see how this carburetor could be bad. I don't see how. The internals look good, everything is good. We looked around for any hairline crack or anything. It just, there isn't, there isn't nothing that we can see. Now, maybe if you put it under an x-ray or something that, you know, but he doesn't have that kind of equipment. He just changes the guts of the, car, of the carburetor, puts it together, tightens it up, good to go. So now I was looking, uh, uh, this carburetor has no number, no numbers at all. But I looked at the other engine and I looked around and behold, lo and behold, I found the number series on this carburetor, which is the, the original. And I took down the number and I looked it up and I can find plenty of carburetors at different prices so that's going to be pending if this carburetor is really shot for whatever reason because i can't figure it out i can't figure it out but if this carburetor is completely bad for some reason i'm going to go and shop and buy a carburetor but now if it still is the issue of flooding because of the pump may be for a 454 which i don't think it is i think i bought it and I said to the guy at the counter, I said, it's a 350 Chevy Marine Power. And he looked it up. He says, okay, I got this one and this one. Uh, he didn't have the Sierra, but he had a Mercury and he had a Volvo Penta. If it's a 350, it doesn't matter which it, which it is. A 350 is a 350. Volvo Penta is just the company that puts it together. It could be Mercury, it could be Volvo Penta, it could be Marine Power, it doesn't matter. It's a 350. The, the pump feeds enough fuel for the carburetor on that engine. Uh, if the if the flooding continues, can you imagine I'm gonna have to replace the pump, which is another two, three hundred dollars on so I'm gonna try it again tomorrow. And I'm gonna go I'm gonna have to pull the trigger and buy that expensive regulator because it's cheaper than buying a new pump. New pump's gonna be around three hundred bucks. Um and if it's pumping too much fuel, but what, what would be the difference? And I'm asking you, the people that know, what would be the difference in pumping the amount of fuel from a 454 to a 350? So the question is, how much more gas does a 454 engine consume? I know it consumes a little bit more, but is that pump that it might be for a 454 flooding the, the carburetor on a 350 is it that much pressure on a 454 pump i mean i'm the pump that that they go on the 350 they go up to seven pounds sometimes they go up a little more maybe nine pounds uh i don't think i'm pumping nine pounds so if the carburetor is being rebuilt several times and it keeps doing what it's doing the fuel is clean now, took care of that. The filter is, is clean, everything is clean. It's just flooding. So if you guys can give me a tip of what do you think it could be, because I'm, I'm already out of answers, I don't know. I, I don't know what else it could be. I'm gonna try that, <clears throat> that regulator, the better one and see if that's gonna help. And uh, I'm also gonna do a test. I'm gonna disconnect the hose from the carburetor 
the fuel line from the carburetor. I'm going to put it in my little one gallon tank, crank it and see the squirt to see how much, if it's squirting like a garden hose, you know, I don't think it is. It should be just enough fuel to fill up the, you know, uh, and if it's, if it, if it fuels up the reservoir, the float should go up and the seat should go down and shut down the, the, the flow. I don't think it's going to be like a hose pushing the thing up and, you know, I don't think, but, you know, anything's possible. So if you guys know an answer to this uh, problem, let me know. I really need some help on that. All right, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.